Wow, are you serious right now? We were standing in front of a Akuma pallet change system. There are 27 massive pallets, 270 tools to each of the two machines that it is feeding. And as you can see, there is a lot of interest going on right now here at Akuma. Now, why would somebody want something like this? Well, for me personally, I can think of a lot of reasons. The flexibility to do 27 different jobs or 27 of one job. The ability to really have redundancy in tooling to try to reduce that labor shortage that we're all battling. When you look at a system like this, this is how you create true productivity at a size that's not just small part or large part. You can do multiple parts and everything in between. We are here again on camera, Paul, and I got you here to talk about this machine, except there's also a really funny word to say, or fun word, I should say, about what this system is called. Yeah, so Tony, this is called the Daifuku FMS. Daifuku. Daifuku, yes. You said Daifuku. Daifuku. Come on, you know that's fun to say, Daifuku. So this Daifuku system, let's talk more about it and where it can help the customers. Okay, this is the latest addition to Akuma's lineup of uh, automation. So it's a 27 pallet system that you can put, uh, right now we currently have two MB5000 machines on this system and each machine has 240 tools in it. It's, it's incredible. You think about feeding two machines at the same time. I'm looking around, and I think you've purposely done this, but I'm looking around, it looks like every job cell is different right now. Yes, yep, right now it's pretty much, you can configure it however you want. You could have 27 of the same part on here, or you could put separate jobs on every pallet. And even if I wanted to put, say, 10 or 20 jobs, it looks like all of this is in tombstone style form, or at least most of this, which means a lot of times in tombstone, we're putting 10, 20 pieces on there as well. Correct, correct. You're limited to your own imagination. If you can fit them all on a tombstone, you can machine them, you can fit them, you can get the tools in there. It's uh, pretty much almost unlimited. And how many tools did you say per machine? Uh, we have 260 tools. On 260. Each so let me correct that. I think I said 270 to introduce this, but 260. And the point of all these tools is to either have redundant tooling for some of the harder materials mm -hmm. or just an excess of tooling because of all of the different pallets, right? Correct. Correct. You want to, you want to get as many tools as you can when you get a FMS system like this kind of the point of automation, right? If we're gonna walk away right. for the week or the weekend right. and we want this thing to keep going, mm -hmm. we want to be able to do that. To be fair, of course there's gonna be some human interaction from time to time. Sure. While the machine spindles are running, maybe mm -hmm. we're changing out tools. Right. While the machine spindles are running, maybe we're loading up a new pallet. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, if you notice, while the machine spindle is running, right? Yes, exactly, yeah. You can load it up with tools. Ideally, you wanna be presetting your tools offline but you don't have to. You can touch your tools off in the machine. So again, endless possibilities. Yeah, and I like, you know, we talk a lot of times about real estate space inside of factories and how we're sometimes limited. In my opinion, although this is a big cell and as I back out and see just as true massive size, based on footprint, it's actually, by comparison, pretty good footprint for the size and what it's capable of doing. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. You, using the vertical storage system is, is uh, great for, for footprint. Yeah, so a lot of times for the audience out there right now who's just starting to get into automation, um, you'll have a cell that's beside of a machine and oftentimes that cell will be dedicated to one machine or there'll be a robot cell that's sticking out, whatever it might be, right? That's why on some of your machines, like just across the way over there for the audience watching, you can't see it, but it's the gantry loading machine on the other side, so we're working from the top. This is very similar to have it vertically done, yes. which is what happens in a lot of cities that are smaller yes, and need absolutely. to vertically build. Right, yeah, real estate is a premium, even in the factory shop floor, so you wanna optimize that space. Well, Paul, I could talk with you about this technology all day, and I know how much you love the camera and beg me to get on here every single time. But before I close this out, is there anything I've left out that I haven't asked you that you'd like to say about this machine that maybe the audience would go, oh my gosh, I, I didn't know that. Well, uh, it's our latest series, our MB5000 H2 series. We've had it for a couple of years, actually, um, but it's been redesigned. We've uh, made the tool changers faster, the B-axis faster, uh, 
the chip and coolant control system is much better now. So another great uh, addition to our lineup of horizontal machining centers. And that's a great way to close, Paul. It really is. Thank you all for watching, working out the kinks of my conversation as well. Don't forget to sign up for the MTD channel on YouTube, LinkedIn, and of course the website, mtdcnc.com. Paul, I know you love doing it. I'm going to come back to you in just a few minutes, all right?